Well guys, this is it. This is a massive monumental moment here in Cooper Motors history. Brand new team on the F1 circuit, taking the F1 world by storm. Doing pretty well. Not, I mean, we're not a front runner, but we're doing pretty well. We've had some successes. We're actually coming off of a second place finish in Austria in our last race. And uh, now it's going to be time to, uh, to figure out what the future of this team looks like. So superstar driver Trevor Martins holding it down. Louis Delatraz is not so much. He was the first driver that we decided to sign at the very start of our team. We chose him because he was cheap. We wanted to save money to invest in the engine and the, the you know, other departments of our team. And uh, he hasn't really been holding his own. I'm just going to be honest with you. So we have the option to renegotiate with him. But I'm thinking we're definitely going to at least take a look at the driver's market here. All right. So if we wanted to, to sign him again, he's going to cost us a $2 million base salary. He's got a 59 rating, 34 experience, which experience is one of the most important stats you can get because with more experience, these guys are going to give you more resource points every, you know, event. So we're talking practice, qualifying, races, everything across the board, they'll get you more. So honestly, I feel like that's his biggest downfall. He's got a 55 racing score, 66 awareness, and a 63 pace, which those aren't too bad, especially for what he costs. But it's also not good. It's, it's, it's really not. So in front of him, we could get Nick DeVry. He's got a $2 million cost. He's a higher acclaim, and he's got a much higher rating, 10 higher. Now, experience-wise, it's not that much different but he does have a lot more awareness and a lot more pace. So we would see a little bit more in terms of, of you know, competitiveness out of him. He's gonna finish higher. He's gonna help us get more team acclaim. He's gonna get our name out there, that sort of thing. Maybe attract better sponsors. So that's not a bad idea. He's $2 million. At 3.75 million, we've got Nicholas Latifi, who's currently racing for Williams. Could buy him out of his contract. He's got a 65 rating with 34 experience. I mean, honestly, we'd be better off going with Nick. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to go through every single one here. You guys can see the $7.5 million market is where it really starts to jump, all right? At $7.5 million, you can have everyone from George Russell, which I'm going to be honest, I really like George Russell. Like, I'm rooting for him. I, I hope he does well. Uh, he's, he's been developing. He's been doing better, so I'm excited to see what the future holds for him. But you can go for anyone from George Russell all the way up to Carlos Sainz. 83 overall, and he's got an experience of 67, dude. That is crazy. Is there anyone else that's even near that here? Looks like Kevin Magnuson, K-Mag here, 78 overall. He's got a, a 67 experience as well that would be pretty good, but he costs the exact same here. So... I mean, if we're going to go for it, let's go for it. I'm going to see if we can sign signs. Drivers are motivated by more than just money. Many drivers will not consider moving to a team if they do not have the required facility levels, a proven track record, or a car that they can compete in. When you approach a driver, they will give you their list of demands and let you know which you passed and which you did not. You only have time to negotiate with three different drivers each day. When multiple teams are interested in a driver, they'll all be bidding against one another. The team with the highest bid when the timer runs out is the winner. The team stop bidding for an extended period. The negotiation may end early. If you take a driver from another team, you'll have to pay a buyout on top of if the salary negotiations are successful. If no other teams are interested in the driver, you could propose a figure to them. The more you offer, the higher the chance of success. If they turn down your offer, you could approach them again the next day if there's time, but you'll need to offer more. Be careful. Some drivers may walk out of negotiations if you think they're wasting your time. Or if they think you're wasting their time, sorry. Um, wow. Okay. So our team has, has $8 million. He demands seven and a half. Our chassis is spec zero and he demands spec one. Our team acclaim is 10, he demands level seven. So we beat everything except for the spec one chassis. We haven't really been focusing on chassis yet. I, I don't think we're gonna be able to be able to change that. He 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 doesn't even wanna he doesn't even wanna wanna negotiate with us. So we're we're gonna have to go back. Lewis Hamilton, you're gonna come come talk with us, right? 19.5 million dollars. Uh, he wants aero spec two team acclaim at level 18 and vehicle performance position third or better. Uh, yeah, he, he doesn't he doesn't want anything to do with us. Because we're such a new team, it may not be an option. 
He's not agreed to negotiate because we don't have our durability up to spec one. Are you kidding me? Are we not going to be able to get anyone here? K-Mag, you're our last hope, brother. You're our last hope. Actually, just kidding. I, I never said that. We actually really want you. Nope, he wants Chassie at spec one. Looking at it, we might have one more option here. We do have Jovanazzi. Ah. <sighs> He's a 72 overall. He's going to cost us six mil. So he's like, he's pretty expensive and he's not nearly on the level as some of these other guys. Like look at K-Mag here, 67 experience. He's only got 49 experience. He's going to cost us $6 million. 34 experience for Nick DeVry with a 69 rating. I mean, he's, he's only three behind Giovinazzi and he's going to cost us so much less money. Can I, can I get Giovinazzi for less money? Can, can, we, can we negotiate here, brother? Keeping it 100% real with you guys, I'm not dying to have him. I, I think switching to Nick DeVry would be a good move. I think it would allow us to invest more into our infrastructure than necessarily into the driver yet. I was really hoping to get Carlos, but at the same time, we could just invest heavily into the chassis and then sign Carlos at the end of the year. So I, when we make a driver move, I would like it to kind of be more of a permanent move when we go for somebody big. So I, I just, I, I don't, I don't want to spend 6 million on him. There's no way we're spending 6 million. So I'm going to say we're, we're small bit is 4 million. Well, what? Alfa Romeo has, has the current highest offer. You were beaten in negotiation. That happened that fast. I'm, I'm going between Louis and Nick DeVry here. Louis, we've been working with him for a while. 34 experience, 55 race, 66 awareness, 63 pace. Uh, we can jump 10 overall points to Nick DeVry here. 34, 65, 81, 73. So, I mean, I like to be loyal, but I'm sorry, Louie, you're gone. Good, goodbye. I'm going to approach this dude, and we're, we're maybe, we're maybe going to try to lowball him. you can make an offer to your driver. The more you offer, the greater the chance of them agreeing to it. But be careful not to insult drivers, though. If you do, they might refuse to deal with you anymore in this negotiation period. I'm gonna go with a high risk offer. Screw you, dude. You're a free agent. Nobody wants you. Declines your offer. You can make a larger offer the next day if there's still some time to negotiate. Oh, okay. Well, apparently I, I suck at this. Okay, it's the next day. We're gonna go back at it. We're gonna approach him again. I mean, should we try to squeeze him here? Should we do another, another high risk offer? <laughs> oh, everything went up. Shoot. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do the medium risk. You're asking for 2 million base. I'm giving you 2.0 for you better freaking take it. You have successfully uh, negotiated for Nick DeVry to join your team, Cooper Motors, for the next 11 weekends. So we have a new driver. F in the chat for Louis. I'm sorry, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. You didn't really get the job done. I don't think Nick's going to be all that much better, but we didn't really have a choice. Unless we were going to pay out the wazoo for Giovinazzi, which would have been nice, but he still doesn't have that much experience that we're looking for if we're gonna pay i want to invest into something long term and uh i just i, I don't think that was it so now we've got 6.02 million dollars that we can kind of mess around with a little bit and uh and maybe invest in our own infrastructure so let's set up our week here we've got uh chassis department focus driver acclaim team building is going to cost us 10k get plus 10 percent to everyone that's actually pretty good but do we want to go for vehicle pr i'm investing in the team we, we've got a, a team building thing going on there and then we're going to do some driver promotion that that works for me we've got some some messages here looks like we have uh passed haas and our performance updates which is is pretty exciting let's look into our facilities here so this is where it's pretty exciting I'm gonna say let's 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 upgrade the resource point generation here for two million dollars. After that, we're gonna start working on chassis without a doubt. So I'm gonna say let's work on resource point uh, generation to start things off. That's gonna cost us another two mil. We got two mil left. I'm um, actually I'm I'm I might I might go over to corporate here. I'm definitely gonna get this here 540k to increase our resource point income by 25%. That's gonna be really, really good. Once we get up to level 15, we can get it up by, by 50%. Media coaching might not be bad. Engine wear reduced by 20%. That's actually not a bad idea either. I think I might I might spend spend 500K on that. We've got 861 points. This is probably what I'd invest in. 24% failure chance on this guy. So let's, let's go ahead and develop that upgrade. Looks good to me. And uh, I think 
I think that's gonna be a wrap. I think we're looking pretty good. It looks like we're gonna have an invitational event coming up here, which might be an opportunity to get some acclaim and stuff. Time trial attack, 1,000 acclaim and $150,000. I'll go to the event. Welcome to today's invitational event, where some of the world's finest drivers will be treating us to a special exhibition of some of the sport's most iconic cars. Sounds good to me. Let's get into it. Here we go, boys. So we're going to finish, uh, finish the race in under 225 in a 1988 McLaren MP44. Sounds good to me. This should be, uh, should be an interesting one. Bit of an old school, old school cool type of deal here. Oof. All right, we got two minutes on the clock. Going to be looking to hit three laps through here. Let's, uh, let's do it. Ooh, this thing definitely, definitely feels quite a bit quite a bit different than what we're used to, but Ooh. she is way more floaty, dude. What in the world is happening? It feels so much different than what I'm used to. Ooh. And she's sliding all over the place. Just gotta, gotta keep it, keep it on the track, Trev. Just keep it on the track. We'll figure out if we need to push a lot harder by the end of the first lap here. Looks like that, that completes it. How do we do on lap number one? It's not going to tell us what our time was. Well, hopefully we're going to be able to get this done. Ooh. Dude, this thing is just, it's, it, it, I can't believe how different it feels. I wish you guys could feel this. It's so floaty and it, it just not responsive. Okay, that got a little bit, a little bit sketchy there. Crazy to think that these guys were, were racing these back in the day. All right, holding it together here, holding it together. Not really sure what our lap times have been. I really hope that we're, we're in, the, in the ballpark here. I think we are. We've, we've had under, under a minute lap times, right? Let's see what we can do, baby. Here we go. Last lap, we're gonna have to do it in about 50 seconds. I'm pretty sure, do we have a two minute and 30 second timer overall? So if that's the case, then we're, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, but I'm not totally 100% sold that I remember correctly. They actually do events like this, like this would be pretty fun. I would imagine the drivers would have a really fun time with this too. Be able to go out there and see some of the heroes of their past when they were growing up watching them and stuff like that 17 seconds looks like we did make it baby that was not easy but we got it done dude i just love like the the management aspect of this game i i, I love you know running the team looking at all the data trying to figure things out like I, that that was that was exciting I, i'm looking forward to when we have more money and a better team so we can start bidding on better drivers and, and all kinds of crazy stuff but um all that aside we've got to get into the actual racing that's what we do best here at cooper motors We've got qualifying at Silverstone today. This bad boy has some of the fastest corners of the year. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be in a car. Like this this one coming up right here, look at this. Just flat out, imagine the G-forces associated with that. There's a, another set of like a, a back and forth little chicane type thing towards the end of the lap too. That's, uh, that's pretty nasty, I'm not gonna lie, but. Get back on the gas nicely there. Look at that, dude. We're up at a P2, only behind Hamilton. This is his home track after all. I would hope he would be pretty good at it, but we'll we'll give him a run for his money, maybe. Ooh, kind of cut that corner a little bit too too close. Ooh. Try to get back on the gas smoothly. Still in P2. This, this is unheard of. Let's go, baby. Come on, Trev. Hang in there. We got P2 yesterday too, which is pretty awesome. Let off the gas there, don't break, but just lift off the, the throttle a little bit to be able to make that corner. This is that second second chicane I was thinking about, dude. Whew. Dude, this, it just, right, left, right, left. It's like a double chicane. Looks like that was our weakest part of the track so far. We're gonna drop back to P7. Try to, try to hang in there through here. Whew. All right, that wasn't too bad. That was fairly smooth. See, some of these you don't even really want to break. You just kind of want to lift off the gas. Get back up to speed here. Ooh, that was not good. 
That was not good. We're gonna get a P7 there. Oh, we got P8 actually. Let me take a look at where Nick Nick ended up. 19, baby. Oh, that's better than 21 or 22. Are you happy with where you'll be on the grid tomorrow? Um. Our work on the aero package has paid off. Shout out to my aero guys. Interesting result today. Would you say that you're happy with your performance? Why would I say things could have gone better? I got P8. That's fantastic for this team. We've got we a rainy day today. Then to the home of British motorsport and the birthplace of the Formula One World Championship. It's race day here at Silverstone and it's time for the British Grand Prix. Back to back rainy races? Silverstone circuit then. It's 3.6 miles long and has a total of 18 corners. And of course, is no stranger to the rain. There won't be any DRS available in these conditions, but the Wellington and Hangar Straits are still good opportunities to tuck into the slipstream and make a pass. Dude, I'm actually really excited about this. Are you kidding me? So we basically got the best scenario possible. We had dry conditions to, uh, to qualify and set our best time, get high up on the grid, and then we've got a wet race here where there's probably not going to be as much passing as was seen in, uh, in our race in, in France. This is actually really, really exciting. So uh, for our session forecast here, it looks like it's going to be medium rain, medium rain, medium rain, and then heavy rain at the end. Default strategy is just going to be to stay on the wet. So I guess, you know, kind of similar to, to France, we're not going to have any pit stops or anything. Obviously going to lose a lot of that tire as, as time goes on, but um, it's, it's going to be worth it. Now we are going to be on the enters here, which, uh, Suggest that we, we think it might be a little bit more dry than what we had in the the French Grand Prix a couple episodes ago We'll, we'll see what we can do. Ooh, look at that late move right there trying to trying to make a move on Albon He's gonna squeeze us back, but hey, we did gain a position there Ooh, Got a little bit loose. Was that on us? Oh I'll get him back. Okay Not bad. Was that a clean pass? I mean it, it might have been a little bit sketchy. I'm not gonna lie. But we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Make it some moves here in the opening, uh, the opening stint of the race. I like it. But, um, yeah, these inners, intermediates, they're kind of, you know, as you expect, in between the slicks and, uh, and the full wets. So, they definitely have a little bit more touch with the track, a little bit more, you know, surface area and touch points to, to be able to warm them up and get that speed and get that handling and that sort of thing so we'll we'll see how this ends up working out for us nice start let's keep it up Whew. this is going to be a lot different than what we had in qualifying because we're actually having a break around some of these corners oh my goodness dude this is insanity this would be so scary knowing that you're like towing with that line of complete like it, one one extra little puddle on the ground and you you're spitting out you're hydroplaning and, and going all over the place be scary enough to do when it's dry out let alone here in the wet I've got a feeling we had a really good start there I, I don't I mean I hope we can but I don't I don't know that we're really gonna be able to keep keep up this pace with these guys maybe we will I don't know we did a really good job and in, in and France the other week, so hopefully that's a sign of what's to come, dude. Every corner we, we are having to flick the wheel the other way because our backside's getting out there. Oh my goodness. You gotta turn left to go right, turn right to go left, baby. Whew. Lightning McQueen, Doc Hudson. This one's for you. Vettel is heavy on us right now, but it does look like there's a pretty big gap back to Leclerc after him. A Ricardo, I'm sorry. What am I talking about? Leclerc's in front of us. We're in a nice fat Ferrari sandwich right now. Oh yeah, just drifting all over the place. Maybe we should have gone full wets. I don't know. It, it kind of feels like the full wets. Oh, he just kind of ran into us right there. I'm not going to lie. Kind of feels like the, the full wets were a better choice two episodes back. Really, the biggest thing is going to be to not completely tank it and spin out and, and ruin the race. You know what I mean? I, for some reason, I just kind of have some bad vibes today. Like this, this, this track is more difficult than France was. And it's got equally bad conditions. Actually have a, a nice little gain on, on Vettel there though. So we'll, we'll take it. Maybe we'll be able to work it out. Whew. We're finding the spots to be able to lift. The bad thing is, is we're just like 
we're having to relearn the track essentially you know what I mean Woo. really getting out there after it dude I, I mean it's no it's kind of fun to go drifting around these corners but we're also gonna lose a ton of tread and a ton of performance over the course of this race if we keep doing that we've got 10 laps to go so Definitely want to try to baby these guys as, as best we can. Try to hold Vettel off for as long as we can. I got Rich Mix with the uh, the overtake mode on. Starving him off for at least one more lap. I don't think he's going to be able to get around us through something like this. Lift off a bit. Ooh. See, we got to be careful about braking and turning at the same time. That's how you end up sliding out and losing, losing all control. Back onto overtake mode with the Rich Mix. I mean, we're kind of getting out there here. This is this is good. Looks like our engine is is really hot though. Okay, we have an issue with the control electronics box. That's going to do additional damage to all other power unit components. See, I thought we swapped that out, but I'm wondering if we maybe didn't do it in time, or like we didn't have enough time for our team to swap that out. I know for a fact I chose to swap it out, but maybe we just didn't have enough time in the week. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, we're, we're hanging in there. You guys can see we're, we're putting up personal bests. We're, we're getting better as we go along. We are losing ground to the guys in front of us. Vettel's still pretty much hanging with us all the way through. I think the guys behind, behind him, Danny, Rick, and stuff are, are starting to catch up a little bit, but nobody's really making any crazy moves. We aren't gonna be getting any podiums today, but we, we might be able to hang out here in the upper midfield. You coping okay in this weather? We're watching the amount of standing water on the road. For now, we think it's safe to stay with the Inter. All right, I appreciate that, Jeff. You know, I, I, I extra appreciate... Oh, we got to start braking now. Our tires must be, must be losing a little bit of traction and stuff. But I especially appreciate that he asked about us first. You, you, you coping all right there, Trev? He wasn't even talking about the car or anything. He was worried about us. I mean, really, in, in actuality, I think he was probably referring to the car through us the like car in front is 6.8 seconds are we enjoying the car is it handling well that sort of thing but uh, I'm, I'm gonna pretend that Jeff just like you know really really cares about my own personal feelings we've really got a nice a nice groove starting to form here through the track keep setting personal personal bests in all these sectors you know the tires are getting warmer we're getting better grip the track is drying off a bit Whew. got on the gas a little bit too hard out of that one there but uh, yeah, we're, we're starting to starting to come into our own here. I like it. There's no DRS or anything thanks to these conditions. So like, I, I mean, you guys you guys saw how hard it was to fight with signs in that that French Grand Prix. Like I, I just don't see a lot of position changes happening here. You know, these straights are are fairly easy. You just kind of get on the gas and do your thing, and then, I mean, none of these corners are really good passing opportunities. So. We're in a pretty good spot. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident with this one. Might be able to come out with a P5 and, uh, and call that a day. Probably a good thing we had such an exciting start to this episode because I feel like this race is, is a snore fest. Had a very exciting start. Got a couple of, of passes early and that's, that's about it. All right, into overtake mode. Rich mix. Take them both off. Come through here. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to constantly give myself new personal bests each lap. Our last lap, I think, was our best overall. We had a, a slower third sector. But, like, coming through here, this, this section's fun. You know, maxing everything out, going as fast as we possibly can, taking it off, trying to glide around this corner. One thing I've started to do is I'll get back on the gas right here. Obviously, we'll come around this. But then I, I kind of lift a little early, and you could kind of coast through all of those without having to give it any gas. Was PSC deployed. The virtual safety car has been deployed. We need to keep a positive delta here. Slow down. Lewis Hamilton's out of the race. Hold on, we, we gotta see this instant replay. Let's see what happened here. Nothing exciting. His engine just blew up and he pulled off. God forbid anything exciting happened in this race, dude. Are you kidding me? All right, so we are we are way ahead of the delta here. I definitely don't want any sort of a time penalty. Oop, now we're back into the positives. 
It is, it is. Drop your speed, our delta is too low and we risk a penalty. Slow your pace immediately. I'm trying, dude. I just, I don't, I mean, we've, we've raced so hard so far here. Virtual safety car is ending. It's Maintain ending. Maintain your pace until the green flag. VSC ending, wait for green. Oh my gosh, that was so close. <laughs> dude, we were above it, so we had to break, then we were below it. And then we got right back on the gas at the perfect moment. That's what I'm talking about. So that's going to put us up in a... Wait. P3? Wait, what happened? I think Bottas was behind Hamilton. We watched Hamilton's replay and saw nothing. I'm wondering... I suggest the rain is going to be lightening up over the next 10 to 15 minutes or so. You should start finding more grip as we clear the standing water. I'm wondering if Bottas ran into Hamilton? I, I don't... To be honest, I have no idea what happened back there, but for some some reason, we are now in P3. That makes absolutely zero sense. <laughs> okay, game. I, I mean, I appreciate you doing me a solid, bro. I feel like I didn't earn it. I had to do no work. I didn't have to take any pit stops. I didn't really have to do any overtakes. Didn't have to do any defending. We just kind of, you know... Had a decent start off the rip, I'm not gonna lie. Like, we, we did all right there, but apart from that, okay, it's, it's been like driver's head out here, dude. Like, I, I really haven't had to do anything. I'm just cruising. Ooh. Definitely losing, uh, losing grip with these tires, though, so we gotta be careful. I will say, Vettel is starting to knock on the door just a little bit here. I mean, we, we've, you know, mainly been about a second and a half to uh you know two and a half seconds ahead of him he got it ooh, 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 be careful Trev. he got it down to 1.1 and it was like 0.9 before that so i am a little bit worried about this it's down to 0.6 here this is your final lap final lap of the race final lap as long as we don't personally mess this up i think we're gonna be fine Ooh, okay sounded like a, the the meme right there the laughing meme Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right, let's go, Trev. Come on, just keep keep her steady here, bud. We got we got plenty of fuel. We got plenty of ERS. It's honestly been hard to use all of our ERS in this. Like I, I've been using it a ton, turning it off and on on every straight. But it's just you, you gain more back through the uh, the corners than you spend on the overtake mode in the straights. From around here, this corner's been getting a little bit sketchy. This is where you go all out, rich mix. Overtake mode enabled. Vettel's going to be going all out as well. There's no doubt about that. Let off a little bit early and kind of coast. Had to break a little bit. Woo! Dude, he's hunting. Coast through here. A little bit more gas. Coast. A little bit more gas. Coast. Took that one a little, a wee, a wee bit wide there, Trev. A wee bit wide. Rich mix with overtake mode on. Do not give him the inside. Ah, oh, we were able to pull off on him. Let's go. Actually, overtake mode gave up on us. We've used too much this lap. So that's a little bit concerning. I'm leaving rich mix on for the rest of this race. We got that straight line speed, that Merc engine, boy. That's what I'm talking about. Final corner coming up right here. Looks like we lost by 16 seconds to second place, but that's gonna be a P3, baby. That was an excellent drive. Wow. P8 to P3. One of the most boring days I've ever been, been a part of. Can I get a slow clap for our boy here? This is what I'm talking about. Nick DeVries. I think that's how you say his name. DeVries. Got P16. And his first outing with Cooper Motors. I'm pretty sure P18 is the best that, uh, that Louis uh, Delatraz, De right? Was that his name? I already forget who he was. That was the best he ever got. P16, his first time out. That's what I'm talking about. Started at 19th. Passed three people on his way there. My man. You must be thrilled to be up on the podium. <laughs> Absolutely. Team put a lot of faith in me. I'm just glad to live up to it. You're breaking all expectations. What's your secret? <laughs> There's no secret. It's all about having a great team and car. How do you feel the weather affected the outcome today? Uh, certainly didn't dampen my spirits. I think the weather was the reason why we did so good. There's no doubt about that. We had a fortunate start. 
We had two guys, one guy retire, and then Bottas ended up in P14. So I'm, I'm not even sure what happened to him. Uh, so, I mean, very, very fortunate day. Very, honestly, kind of boring day. I'm not going to lie. But uh, it is what it is. Sometimes you have them like that, and we're not going to complain. We three for three at our, our sponsors here, which is good. Going to make all that extra dough, and uh, we're going to head back to the HQ to take on week 13. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. I think I'll probably bump the difficulty up a little bit. I bumped it up a couple points from last episode. From the sponsors is cleared, and we're making good profit against our running costs. I'm I'm gonna say let's let's go ahead and renew these sponsors 100. We're we're gonna keep them for a long time. But uh, ooh, worn components. See, hold on. Let me let me go to this vehicle. Did it not? It didn't fit it. I definitely selected it, but it didn't fit it. So we're gonna fit that. We're gonna be good to go in the next episode. Hungary's up next. I'm gonna see you guys there and. Uh, Thanks for watching.